Okay, our next module we're going to talk about is the ASC2 uh, controller. And basically this module has two purposes. Um, you can use it as a simple on-off switch for up to eight accessories or lighting. Or you can also use it to control uh, switches, track switches. So um, on my layout, I have all command control fast track switches. And one of the reasons I went with a fast track system is because of those switches. And so those I would not have to set up with the AC2 controller because they're already um, set up with the system and the CAB2 remote will automatically operate them. So I don't have to do anything with those as far as switches. But if you don't have fast track switches and you're using some other type of switch like the the classic uh, tubular type uh, Lionel O gauge or O27 switches that are remote control or things like uh, switch machines from like Atlas or some other company then you can use this uh, module to operate those switches through the CAB2 or the iPad app and basically when you're uh, using it for accessories you can control up to eight and when using for switches because there's multiple wires that have to come from the switches you can only use it for four remote controlled track switches but again because I'm using all uh, fast track command control switches I don't have to worry about that so on my layout I'm just using this for accessory control the one uh, unique thing about this module is that it has two modes of addressing what, what they call um, 8 ID and single ID and what that means is basically um, if you watch my previous video on the block power controller you can assign up to eight different TM CCIDs to these modules so one for every single terminal that you can attach a wire to or on this module you can actually assign what they call a single ID which means the entire module is, is set to one single ID and then each of the terminals gets an additional number that you would punch in on the remote when you're trying to activate it and there's a reason they set up this single ID which we'll get to when we uh, talk about how to hook up the uncoupling track section but it, it really is meant uh, for that particular section and and it acts differently when it's in that mode as opposed to the 8 ID mode so we will get into all that and what's the difference between those two modes and why you'd want to use one or the other but that's one of the main differences between this controller and the block power controller since the block power controller is also just on off switches if for some reason you ran out of uh, space on your ASC2 and maybe you had one extra accessory that you had to operate or add you could put it on the block power controller and get the same sort of result uh, so this this one just has an extra feature in it um, with these two sub modes for either 8 ID or single ID and you're gonna see why they did that and you know why you would want to use this particular module if you if you need to use a single ID addressing mode and so we're gonna do that when we when we go through all the demos and, and set it up but that's basically what this module is designed for it's for either accessory or switch control through again the LCS system which is controlled by your CAB2 or your uh, iPad app or third-party apps or however you're controlling the LCS system so let's get into it and we'll we'll start uh, by looking at the uh, the modules okay so here's our ASC2 controller and basically um, if you saw the previous uh, episode where I talked about the block power controller it's pretty much the same the same thing is very similar um, at the bottom here you have the two ports where you're plugging in your PDI cables so from the block power controller it comes over to here to my first ASC2 controller and then from here it goes out to another ASC2 controller so again they're just daisy chained together uh, same thing at the bottom here there's the, the button here that's to uh, program the module so we'll use that in a second to actually program this module and then you have the same four ports here, same connections for the power and, and the ground for the relays. So again, if you didn't see my previous video, these four connections here are to power up the actual eight relays that are inside this box here. So basically they do not power the accessories or the switches. They just provide power to open and close the relays. And so that has to be provided for you have to supply a power supply so it has to go back to one of your transformer 
um, either handles or another power supply to make sure there's always power to those relays. At the top here, uh, very similar situation. We basically have the uh, terminals up here. So you've got four terminals and a common terminal and then four terminals and a common terminal. So same setup as before, although you'll notice that on the actual um, uh, front here where they have the uh, sort of the printed numbers, there's two lines here, one for switch and one for accessory, depending which way you set this module up. And so it changes here depending what you're trying to do. Um, but of course, as I described earlier, I am going to be using this only for accessories. So basically I am just going to be using the all eight ports here. And that's pretty much it. So then we're just going to program it and I'm going to first do a simple on and off accessory, the Lionel Sawmill. So we'll show you how to program this module and then how you hook it up just to control that simple accessory. Okay, so first we're going to program the module. So the first step is to press the program button, hold it for one second, and then the red LED will start blinking slowly. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go down to your cab, re cab to remote, and you're going to pick the accessory button, and then you type in the number of the starting uh, ID for the next eight IDs. So basically I'm going to choose one here and that's going to set this module uh, through one through eight for the IDs basically. Okay, so basically that's my starting ID and then you're going to press the set button at the bottom of the remote and what's going to happen is it's going to be just like the block power controller was. So watch when I press the set button it blinks very fast and then it goes back to slow blinking. So now I've set it as accessory mode and not switch mode. Now, and I've started the base address at one for this particular module. Now I have to set it to either eight TMCC IDs or one TMCC ID. So on this particular case, I'm gonna set it to eight. So the way you do that is you just press aux one and then zero It'll blink really fast again, and then the light will go out. So now I'm programmed for eight TMCC IDs on this module, and I'm in accessory mode, okay? So again, what accessory mode allows me to do is when I push the aux one button, it will apply power to the accessory for as long as I hold the aux one button down, and as soon as I let go, it stops the power, so it's a momentary button. If I hit aux 2 on the remote, then it's going to continually stay on until I hit aux 2 again to turn it off. So the way this is wired up here is there are two wires coming in from the sawmill. So that's the first accessory I'm setting up here. So if you look here, I have two wires coming in here. It's a red and a white. The red wire comes down to the first port on the ASC2 controller. The white wire is going to go out to the transformer itself that's giving power to the accessory. So in this case, I'm going to attach it to handle C of my ZWL. So I have all these uh, distribution blocks marked A, B, C, D. And so I just tied it in here at the bottom, basically. And so that, that goes out to the actual sawmill itself. Then what we need to do is we need to apply the power for the ID, it's for the bank of four, because remember each bank of four gets a separate power feed. And so that's this red wire right here, which goes over again to the same distribution block for handle C on my ZWL. And so whatever the voltage I set for this distribution block, that's the voltage that's going to be for those four ports on that bank. So if I have four accessories that are very close in voltage and need the same basic voltage, they can all be hooked up to those same ones right there. If all eight on this particular module uh, work with about the same voltage, then all I have to do is run another power wire from this common port here over to the same distribution block for handle C, and then basically they're both getting the same amount of voltage, and all eight of those accessories then are set for that voltage. And so you can have multiple ASC2 controllers and then set them to different voltages, 
or you can have one AC2 controller and set half to one voltage and half to another voltage so that if you have accessories that require different voltages, some higher, some lower, you can set those and then basically they'll work correctly. So let's go up to the actual accessory itself now and see how it works. Okay, so here's our uh, accessory, the sawmill. And so basically I have this set up to the ASC2 controller and um, I'm going to just basically turn it on using my cab to a remote. So on the remote itself here, uh, I'm just going to press accessory 1 because that's the port that it's uh, linked to. And then down below, I'm just using basically my aux 1 and aux 2 buttons right here for different types of control. So uh, if I use just aux 1 and I hold it, um, it will just momentarily run it as long as I hold that button. If I hit aux 2, then it'll keep it on until I hit aux 2 again. So if we look at the sawmill here and we listen to it, I'm just going to push aux 1 for a second. So you can see it, as soon as I let go of the button, it stopped. But So that's a momentary switch, basically. But if I hit the aux 2 button, then the accessory is just like you turned a switch on and it will just continue running until you hit the aux 2 button again and it turns off. So I'm going to hit aux 2 and the sawmill turns off. So that's the first uh, example of something that you can do with the ASC2 controller. But we've got more that we can do with this particular module. Now, if you remember when we did the block power controller, it was the same type of thing. That was an on-off switch, basically. So for something like the sawmill, if you ran out of ports on your ASC2 module and you had an extra port left over on the block power controller, technically you could attach your sawmill to that controller just to use that one port and again that would just be a, a solid on or off. You would not have the choice for the momentary because that is only available on the ASC2 controller and that's one of it that's one of the differences between the block power controller and the ASC2 controller. So basically uh, the block power controller is always just an on off switch. The ASC2 allows you to do a momentary switch depending which button you hit. And also the ASC2 is specifically designed to be hooked up for um, controlling of switches also, switch machines. So that's the main difference between those those two modules. Um, but you can, you know, again, instead of buying a whole new module, just say you had one extra accessory that you had to hook up, you technically, if, if the voltage was right going into your block power controller, you could use that. Um, because remember, each of these modules is split in half into two banks of four. So you had a block power controller, maybe you're only using half of it and the other four ports are open. You could uh, supply a certain voltage to that side of it and then power a couple of on-off, basic on-off accessories like the sawmill hill. Now this would, that would not work for accessories like the uh, milk car or something like that. Anything that requires a momentary um, power to the unit, uh, you would want to use an ASC2 for that. Okay, so uh, that's the basic uh, setup, and that could work for lighting, so yard lights, house building lighting, anything you want to turn on and off, basically street lighting. Um, so you could use it for anything that basically you want to just turn on and turn off. And so I'm going to next show you how I set up my operating tracks and uncoupling tracks because there, there was sort of a situation uh, that's not accounted for with those particular things. And I still wanted to control them through the CAB2 remote or the um, devices that are linked through the Wi-Fi. So basically I had to come up with a solution for those, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. But that is your basic on-off switch uh, with the AC2 controller. Okay, so uh, before we get to the next step, let's just talk for a second before I forget about um, the PDI cables. So these are the cables 
that are linking all the modules in the LCS system. So um, basically there are four different length cables that you can buy. Uh, they have a one foot, uh, three foot, uh, ten foot, and then the twenty foot. So basically I decided to put all my modules together underneath the control uh, panel in the front of the layout so I'm using the one foot to connect all the different modules there so to daisy chain them underneath there I just need a very short module um, and then um, I need a little extra long one for a three foot one um, that I was going from the one side to the other side underneath there so I just need a little bit extra so I had a three foot one but otherwise underneath the layout itself I'm pretty much using the 20 foot module uh, length 20 foot length PDI cables uh, to connect all the modules because I didn't know how exactly where I was going to put all the sensor tracks and things like that and so I wasn't exactly sure how long they would be so I just bought the uh, 20 foot one and I think I have one 10 foot one underneath there I bought a shorter one for one particular area but um, for the most part if you're going to join all your modules and keep them in the same location you probably just need a basically either a one or three foot and then underneath the layout uh, if you get the 20 foot you're pretty much covered because you'll have plenty of uh, cable and you can always just wrap up the extra and tie it up underneath the layout uh, but I did want to mention that this is a part of the system that you must purchase separately these cables don't come with any of the modules and obviously because they wouldn't know what length you would need so it's going to be kind of hard to package cables with modules um, and they're you know between the different lengths are actually pretty close in price so that you're really not saving any any big dollars by buying the necessarily the shorter one so that's why like underneath the layout I pretty much did all 20s uh, between all the different sensor tracks just so I wouldn't run short of length when I was trying to connect them together but um, you'll need one cable for every additional module that you add to the system so if you're just doing only one module like one sensor track and you're connecting it to your system then that would be connected to the original DB9 with the power supply cable and you wouldn't need any additional modules but anything after that every module you buy after the first one you must also purchase a PDI cable to go with it so that you can connect that additional module uh, to the system. So just a quick uh, note about the cables and what you need for those. Okay, so let's talk about a unique situation. We've got two other things that we want to control with the ASC2 controller and that is our uncoupling track section. So these are just the short sections that have the magnet in the middle of them that you can use to uncouple cars or activate certain cars, etc. And then uh, the other one is going to be the operating uncoupling track section that has these inner rails here for the slide shoes on some of the um, operating cars. So they work differently and they're set up differently and how you connect them to the ASC2 controller. So um, let's start with the uncoupling track section first. So basically the uncoupling track section out of the box when you install it in your layout is powered by the center rail normally uh, from your track. So whatever the, your track power is, whatever that voltage is, that's what's going to be the voltage for the magnet when you power it. And so it, it comes normally with just this uh, button and then, then of course it just has basically two terminals on that connect underneath the track. And all this button does is actually interrupt or actually connects uh, the hot side. So it's basically just like a light switch in a wall where it's just it's just completing the circuit basically so in other words there's always power coming to the center rail from the track itself that's where it's getting its power um, but that power is being interrupted because they have this switch in between that and the magnet itself so basically underneath there you're getting um, it's being interrupted and when you push the push button of course and you're completing the circuit for the power portion of it and it's ready to go the ground is just attached to the outside rails so the other side the other wire coming off the magnet is just soldered to the outside rail underneath and that's just going through the common that normally would be part of your layout but when you're actually going to connect it up to the ASC2 controller uh, you got to be careful because one the instructions that come with the ASC2 controller are actually a little misleading if you don't read them carefully because the example they actually show you for wiring up the uh, 
uncoupling track is actually um, used if you look at the example in the um, in the manual it actually lists a Lionel part number which is actually the old post-war style uncoupling uh, operating track section and not a fast track uncoupling track section so I don't want the um, uncoupling track section to be at full 18 volts since I'm a hundred percent legacy I don't want this to be at a, a 18 volts when I power it up okay because all that's gonna do is make things operate like you know very loud and um, fast you know depending what it is so I want this to be actually at 14 volts instead so the way I can do that is all I'm gonna do is again I just removed this I just unplugged this uh, push button controller from the track and all I did is I left the one wire coming out of the magnet goes to the outer rail so that you leave as usual but the other wire that uh, would normally go to this push button switch you just solder a wire to the tab underneath here and then you run a single wire from here over to the ASC2 controller and then over there on that controller of course you're gonna have eight different ports that or eight different terminals that you can choose from to connect it to so you're just gonna connect it to one of those terminals okay now there is something unique when you're uh, using these operating track sections and it is in the guide and I alluded to it earlier when we were setting up the AC controller and programming it uh, so if you remember when we programmed it we used eight TMC CIDs so it was an eight addressing module that we set up so in other words I could turn on and off eight different accessories separately by the, each of their own addresses but there is a sub mode that you can set when you're doing the final programming of a module to set it to what they call a single ID and what that means basically is, is you're setting the entire module to a single sub ID and then what happens is when you actually operate the remote control track section from the cab 2 remote it will actually just momentarily activate this magnet no matter how long you hold down the button it doesn't matter it's just gonna momentarily activate it and then shut it off right away so if you're using the uh, mode that has eight IDs yet remember when I was doing it earlier and I was demonstrating the sawmill remember I could hold down aux 1 and as long as I held down aux 1 the op this accessory would operate if I let go of aux 1 then it would stop so it was it was basically staying on as long as I held the button down but if I hit the aux 2 button then it would be on permanently until I hit aux 2 again to turn it off so that was more like a switch um, the issue may be that if you accidentally hit aux 2 and you turn on the magnet and you don't realize it the magnet could stay on and then it could technically overheat and you could ruin your track section um, because unlike the accessories which you see you know you can see and hear them running you see what's going on you know they're on this you won't necessarily know it's on unless you're running a car over it and you hear the noise or something like that so basically they've added this sub mode where you can make it what they call single addressing and then it's a little bit different when you're punching it in on the cab too so it's not the same exact thing as when you have it under the eight addressing but basically what you're going to do is uh, punch in the ID of the module so now the whole module has one single ID instead of eight different IDs and then you're gonna do aux 1 just like before but then you punch in the number of the terminal that you want to activate so again you still have eight terminals on there and so if, if my operating track here I was trying to operate was on terminal 2 it would be aux 1 and then I hit the 2 and as soon as I hit the 2 this will momentarily activate and then deactivate right away I don't have to do anything else it'll automatically deactivate and if I want to activate it again I have to do the same combination which is aux 1 2 and it would activate so you have basically one extra button on the cab 2 that you have to hit um, you're doing the base ID first but then you're doing aux 1 and normally that would be it but in this case you have to do aux 1 and then the corresponding number that's associated with that port so it is a little bit if you have your whole layout set up for all these different IDs and um, they all work the same way this kind of works a little bit differently if you set it in the uh, single addressing sub mode 
So what we're going to do is we're going we're to set one of these up here in the single addressing sub mode and then we're going to set one up in the eight address mode and so you can see the difference on how the operating track section will work when we do that. So let's go program a module for the single address mode. Okay, before I forget, uh, let's just come back to the module for a second here. As far as the wiring goes, um, remember if you if you watch my previous video for the block power controller, etc., the wiring is all the same on all these modules. So, again, at the bottom here, you have a, a power and a ground going into these terminals at the bottom, and these, again, just power the relays inside the module. So they have nothing to do with the accessory, or in this case, the operating track or the uncoupling track. They're just for powering up the relays in here. So that's all the same. So those go to out, out to your transformer. Uh, to bring power to there. You have the same PDI cables connecting all the modules together, so there's no difference there. And at the top here, um, this white wire coming into terminal 8 here is the one coming from the uncoupling track magnet. So that's the one where I took off the push button controller, I just unhooked it, and then I soldered a wire from the terminal underneath there that the push button would normally be connected to, and I just ran it over here to terminal 8. And then the red wire, of course, is the, what they call the common on these modules, or this is what the, where the power is actually coming from. And this red wire is running over to my terminal block here, which is, is going up to my ZWL, so one of the handles. And so that's how you guys are going to be able to control how much voltage goes into these uncoupling magnets, because I have this set on mine over on that handle of the ZW to 14 volts. So instead of using track power, because you're running it through this ASC2 module, whatever amount of voltage you have coming into these common terminals, and remember, there's two of them, because it's split into two banks of four, so the first four terminals get one uh, power feed, and then the last four terminals get the next power feed. So this power feed I have coming in here, this red wire, is going over to the ZWL, and basically, whatever I have that handle set to, that's the voltage that's going to be used for those operating track sections. So there is an advantage good doing this way because you're not going to use full track voltage. You're going to use the voltage that you want to have on that uncoupling or that operating track section. So that's one nice part about it. But I just thought I'd remind everybody that the, the wiring is pretty much the same as I did on the block power controller and everything else. It's basically you have those two common feeds that, that bring the power in and then you're um, basically you have your individual ports, up to eight of them, that goes back out to your either accessory or in this case the uncoupling track section. Okay, so here we have one of our modules. We've got a couple, you know, we have um, uh, four ASC2 controller modules on our layout, so I'm just going to pick this last one here. And so up, the first three have ID set for the eight addressing mode and they're up to ID 24. So my next ID number free would be 25. And so this particular uh, module we would normally set to 25 to 32 if we were doing the 8 IDs. But this time we're going to set this one to the single addressing mode. So this whole module is going to be addressed with ID 25. And so it's basically the same process as we did before with one last step that changes. So down at the bottom here, same thing as before, we're going to uh, hold the program button down to the LED flashes. And then we're going to go down to our CAB2 remote, basically, and we're going to do accessory. And then you're going to type in the first uh, number of that, the module you want it to be. So in this case, it's going to be 25 for ID on this one. And then, of course, we're going to go down and hit the set button. Uh, and if you watch the LED, just like before, when we hit the set button, it blinks really fast for a second, then it goes back to the slow blinking. So we've set this now to ID 25 for the module. Now we have to tell the system, do I want it to be 8 addressing or single addressing? And so this time I want single addressing. So the difference is, on our CAB2 remote, we're going to do the AUX1 button. And instead of doing 0 for 8 IDs, we're going to do 1. So again, watch how what happens when I hit AUX1. Aux 1 and then 1, and I get the uh, fast blinking and then the blinking stops completely, so now it's programmed. So this is now programmed for single ID mode, and my uncoupling track section that I'm testing with here is on, I don't know if you can see it on the writing here, but it is actually on this port right here, which is number 8. So that should be my ID for the uncoupling track 
that I'm going to go and try to operate. So let's go over and see what happens when we, we've set this in single address mode and we're trying to run our uncoupling track. Okay, so here we are at our uncoupling track. It's actually the operating track section. And I just have the uncoupling wired in the center here. And actually the, the next part after this will show you how I did that on the actual operating track section. But it's the same whether I'm doing it on an operating track section or a straight uncoupling track section. The operation is going to be the same. So now that I've set my AC2 module to the single address mode, um, I'm going to test it out and see what happens. So I just have this car here. I'm just going to put the, uh, the coupler right over the magnet there. And basically on my cab to remote, remember I just set that module to 25. So I'm going to do accessory 25. So now I'm addressing that module. And then normally, if I was in the 8 address mode, I would just either have to hit AUX1 and hold the button down, and that would operate it, or AUX2 would turn it on and off. But that's not the case now that I'm in single addressing mode. So now that I'm in single addressing mode, I do AUX1, and then what you have to do is one extra step, which is you have to type in the number of the port that you're attached to for this uncoupling track. So remember, I just told you uh, the wire is going to port 8 or terminal number 8 on the AC2 controller. So now that I hit AUX1, if I do 8, uh, let's watch what happens. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically hit 8 on the keypad. And you saw that it just did the magnet. But even if I hold down 8, it doesn't matter. It does it for that short period of time automatically. So that time that you just saw there is all it's going to do. So if I close this coupler again, let's put this back over here. Um, and I just want you to listen, so I'm going to go back and do the same thing. So it's going to be AUX1 and then the 8 button on the keypad. And watch as I, I'm going to hold it down, but listen, you'll, you'll hear that even though I'm holding down the button, the magnet stopped. So I'm going to hold it. And see, I'm still holding it, pushing on it, but the magnet actually stopped. So that's the difference really between the different modes of single addressing and the 8 ID addressing. When you're in single, the magnet will only operate momentarily when you push the corresponding number, and then it'll stop by itself. And to do it again, you have to hit the AUX1 again, and then you have to hit the number again for it to do it, and then it'll do what it needs to do. If you hit another number, so, so if I do AUX, let me put this back over here, the magnet here. If I do AUX1, and I hit, say, it's 2 instead, you'll see that if I'm looking at the magnet in the car, nothing happened. Okay, because that's not the ID that this, the wire that's coming out of this one is going to. It's going to 8. So again, if I did AUX18, then it would actually activate that magnet. Okay, and again, this is more really a safety feature than anything else because if you have it set up on the regular 8 ID addressing mode, you can still do the same thing just by holding down AUX1 because remember what you do in that mode is you hit accessory, the ID of the port number you're after, and then you would just hold down AUX1 for as long as you want to for the magnet and it would do the same thing. So if you just momentarily hit it, it would do the same thing as it just did now. Um, but the problem is that when you're in the 8 um, ID mode, the AUX2 button is also active for that. And if I accidentally hit AUX2, that magnet would be energized. And if I didn't realize I hit AUX2, that magnet will stay energized until I hit AUX2 again or until it burns out. So that's really the, the difference between 8 address and single address. Is that they've automatically programmed in so that if you do the single address, it will just operate that magnet just for a little bit or a short period of time. Now, whether that's good or bad, that, that's going to depend on your layout because you have to, you know, really realize, like, is it just going to be for uncoupling tracks that you want that to happen? Because if you set that up um, on the sliding rail section, which I'm going to show you how to do that in a, section, in a set, uh, second, basically then you'd have to keep hitting that button to operate some of your sliding rail cars like say the barrel car for instance which you would probably want to have on all the time or off all the time as you're running it you don't want to have to keep hitting aux one and the number aux one number to get the barrel to move down you know a little bit at a time so you have to think about your layout and how it's going to fit and which of the modes is better for you and as long as you 
keep track of the buttons that you're hitting on the remote, it's no big deal. And, you know, as always, don't forget, the, the red triangle on the remote will shut down everything in the LCS system. So everything will be shut down just like it does, it shuts down your trains and everything else. So if you find that there is something or you weren't sure, you can quickly turn everything off if you needed to. So that's, that's the difference between that mode and the other mode. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this same um, electromagnet uncoupling uh, part here and I'm going to now change it to the aid address mode and then we're going to come back and uh, do the button so you can see the difference and then we'll try that again. Okay, so here we're back at the module again. We're going to reprogram it for aid address mode. So again, we're going to hold down the program button. The red LED will start flashing. Then we're going to go down to our cab 2. We're going to do accessory. We're going to start at the same ID, 25. And then again, I'm going to hit the set button. If you look here, when I hit set, it flashes really quickly and goes back to slow flashing. Now the difference is, I'm going to do aux 1 on the keypad again, but this time I'm going to do aux 1 0, and that's going to set it to 8 addresses. So that means <clears throat> that this module, each one of these little terminals now has their own ID, 25, 26, 27, all the way up through 32. So before, even if I had 8 uncoupling tracks attached to this module, they would all start or be on address 25. And then I hit the aux 1 and the number for the terminal I want. Now it works a little bit differently. Each one of these terminals actually has their own ID, 25 through 32. So actually because the last terminal is going to be 32, that's what I'm going to punch in the cab 2 to actually control that uncoupling track now. And then you're going to see the aux 1 and aux 2 button are going to behave differently. So let's go over and look at that. Okay, so now that we have this set to the 8 address ID, we have to change it so we're, our accessory is going to be accessory and then 32. Because that's the uh, terminal or port that our wire is on that goes to this particular operating track section. Alright, so now I have it 32. So now here's what the difference is going to be. So on our uncoupling track section, um, what we're going to do is push aux 1. So if you remember just before I had to hit aux 1 and then I had to hit a corresponding number for whatever terminal the wire was connected to on the controller. That's not the case anymore because now it has its own separate ID 32. So that one little terminal on that module has 32 as its ID. So now that I've picked 32 I can just hit aux 1 and if I hit aux 1 just quickly just listen to the magnet. Okay. If I hold down aux 1 it stays until I let it go. So that is basically, I have control over how long that magnet stays on. So I'm going to hit it and let go. Okay. The difference is now, I also have aux 2 available to me, which I don't have when I'm on the single addressing mode. And when I hit aux 2, I'm just going to click it and just listen for the sound. So I'm just going to turn it on. And you can see it, when I took my hand away, it continued to activate the magnet. And it didn't stop until I hit the aux 2 again. So that's basically your on-off switch. Aux 1 is the momentary switch. And so when you're in the 8 ID mode, you have momentary and on-off. And both of them will trigger that magnet. When you're in the single addressing mode, you only have the momentary. And it doesn't even matter how long you hold this button down because it automatically by itself will turn itself off after just a moment. So that's really the key difference. So if you're sure that you're not going to accidentally leave it on, it really is no issue putting it into the 8 ID address mode. And honestly, um, if you're using the single address mode, again, you have to type in the number, then you have to do aux 1, then you have to do the number of the port. If you're doing the 8 address mode, you just do the number of the actual port and then you hit your buttons to turn it on or off or hold it down for momentary action. So it really depends which you prefer. The wiring is the same no matter which way you go. It's really just how you decide to program the module. 
but that is the recommended way. That's what they have in the instructions for op uncoupling track sections is to use the single addressing mode. Now the one advantage to it is you don't have to remember individual numbers for each of your tracks because they would all have the same address. So in my case it would have been 25. So I could, I could program up to eight uncoupling tracks and they would always be 25. But then you still have to know the individual terminal number and actually control that individual track. So I find it easier to just use the eight address mode because then I only have one number I have to remember for each track. And so that's pretty much the way I think I'm going to do it on my layout. But again, there is a possibility that sometime I might accidentally, when I'm operating one of these uncoupling tracks, hit aux 2, maybe not realize it. And the magnet could stay on. There's a possibility it could burn out. But, you know, it's probably going to be rare since, you know, I'm the one pretty much operating the the trains mostly. So it's it's going to depend on how comfortable you feel on your layout. If you want a safety and you want to make sure that you can never burn out a magnet, then you want to use ID single addressing mode. But if you're comfortable knowing that, oh, no, I have control over it and it's okay, you can use the 8 ID address mode. So either one of those will work. But again, for the operating track section, all you're going to do basically is underneath this uh, track section here, there's just the wire that you're going to pull off the terminal to take off your, um, your push button controller. And you're just going to run a single wire from that terminal, which is the power wire, going to the magnet. So just underneath the track, you just look at look at the magnet and see the one of the wires coming off is going to be attached to the outer rail, and then one of the wires is just going to be attached to a terminal which is like between the rails, and it's that terminal that you solder to, and then run your wire over to the AC2 controller. So it's just going to be a single wire coming from this operating track section, and that will get you what you need. Okay. So our next uh, piece that we're going to go over is the operating track section and that section uh, requires a little more work because that is not accounted for in any of Lionel's documentation. So we're going to go over that and how you can actually still hook that up to your ASC2 controller and you'll still be able to control your sliding rails for uh, those types of operating cars that you have that require those rails. Okay, so let's talk about the uh operating track section which of course contains not only the center magnet that's the regular for uncoupling cars and uh, also those cars that have plungers and things like that but also it contains these uh, inner rails here there's two sets on each side of the magnet basically and these inner rails provide power and ground to operating cars so for instance I have a barrel car right here so underneath the barrel car you have the um, sliding shoes that ride on those rails basically and on this car basically one of these is on each of these are on the opposite side of the track so one of these is for ground and one of these is for um, power and that's how it completes its circuit on this particular car some cars uh, actually complete their circuit through the actual wheels themselves in the cars in which case you would only use the powered side of the track and that's the side the sliding shoe would be on but either way uh, by default the way these are set up is uh, you can see in the center here we have these sort of plastic uh, uh, rails and plastic around the magnet so this center section is sort of isolated and so on the left side of the screen here these rails would be the powered ones and on the right side these would be the ground ones okay so out of the box basically what happens here is the track comes with this controller with two push buttons on it one called uncouple one called unload and basically there are four uh, terminals that come off this track so we got a black red green and a blue and so obviously those do not connect up with the AC2 controller the way they are and so I had to find a way to somehow be able to power these rails just like I'm powering the magnet on the um, operating track section so that I could use the cab to remote and the AC2 module to actually control my operating track section just like I do everything else on the layout. 
So that is not in any instructions. There are no instructions in any of the, uh, there was nothing in the operating track and there was nothing in the uh, ASC2 module on how to hook up an operating track. They used to have an operating track controller um, in the TMCC line, but they don't have anything corresponding to that in the LCS line for some reason. I'm not sure why, but regardless, um, I figured I would uh, dig into it and then find a way that I could actually still operate these operating tracks with the ASC2 controller. So um, this is what I did and this, this uh, next little section is going to describe basically how I took that track, modified it, and then hooked it up and then we'll do a demo so you can see exactly how it works. Okay, so um, this video is for um, the procedure to wire up your fast track um, remote operating track section to the LCS ACS controller. So basically Lionel does not provide any instructions nor do they have a way currently they don't have another module like they did under the TMCC generation where they actually had an operating track controller. They don't have an actual LCS operating track controller they just have the ASC2 controllers and if you look in the instructions in those controllers the only operating section they can control is actually just an uncoupling track. They can't control the operating tracks that use the uh, sliding rails for the cars that have the sliding shoes. But I am totally command control. I want to do everything through the cab too. I don't want to have any uh, switches or controls anywhere around the layout. And so this was sort of hanging me up because it's the one piece that um, Lionel hasn't accounted for basically. So what I did is I decided to um, uh, open it up and check and see exactly um, how I could make that work. Because the AC2 controller is basically just a set of relays, on and off relays, that you control with the CAB2 remote. And, you know, you can either have momentary um, control or you can have on and off. Um, so basically... Obviously for the magnet we want momentary control and then for the sliding shoes sometimes when we want we on like if we're doing the barrel loader and we're unloading a bunch of barrels or we want to uh, do momentary where we just want to do uh, one shot at a time like the milk car or something like that. So basically um, if you look underneath here you can see that um, the magnet itself just has one wire coming out to it. Um, to one of the sliding rails, that's its power feed, and then over here it has the uh, solder to the outer rail, which is the ground or the common that it's getting from the track. And then the sliding shoes actually have a connector here, a blue connector, which uh, is for this side of the sliding shoes. You can see it comes over to here and there's a crossbar that connects the, all the, the two sliding shoes together on this side of the magnet. And then over here there's a green um, connector that basically is for the other side and that connects the two sliding tracks on this side. Then you have the red uh, connector which is basically the power it's getting from the center rail on the track and then you have the black here which is the outside ground which again it's getting from the outer rail. Um, and so basically for the center magnet uh, this will be pretty easy because all we're going to have to do is cut this wire right here and then this is the wire that's going to go to the AC2 controller so it's going to go to one ID on the controller the ground will stay here and that will take care of that for the sliding shoe rails basically one of the sides here I need to ground so basically I'm going to take a wire from this blue connector and just come over here and solder it over to the outside rail for the ground. And then the other one, which is the green one over here, basically is what's going to go to the ASC2 controller. So that's going to be the power for that. And these other ones will be, all these will be taken off here. So this, this uh, controller here that's attached to the track will be completely removed. And basically I will just have two wires coming out, two power wires and those two power wires will go to the AC2 controller and they will each get a separate ID so 
let's say it's ID 1 and 2. So if I want to do the center magnet because I'm trying to coupling something, it'd be ID 1. If I'm going to do the unload a car or something, then it would be ID 2. So for each operating track, you need two IDs on the ASC2 controller. And each ASC2 has up to eight IDs. And I've got a bunch of the ASC ASC2's um, daisy chain together, so I've got plenty of places for it. So in this section I'm trying to build right here, I've got actually two operating track sections that I'm trying to put in, and so I'm going to I'm going to basically uh do that. So I already did one over here. So if we come over here, here's one that's been completed. So if you see here where the blue wire used to be, I just soldered a wire on and I just ran a wire over here to the outside rail. So that's my ground for one side of the sliding shoe. And then on this side over here, you can see I just soldered a wire to where the uh, green one used to be, and that one is a wire that's going to go out to the AC2 controller. Uh, on the magnet, I snipped the wire off here, um, and then basically I soldered the white wire that you see here that's going to go to the AC2 controller. And I put a little piece of uh, shrink wrap on here to protect it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, this wire coming off this coil... You know, this is a coil just like any other any other coil that would be on a motor or anything else. And a, the wire is actually coated with a clear coating, clear insulator on it. So when you, you solder these two together, you've got to make sure you take a little piece of sandpaper and uh, sand off that little coating so you get a nice shiny uh, copper uh, wire to solder onto. Otherwise, you're, it's going to be, you're, one, you're not going to have an uh, easy time soldering it, but two, you'll get a poor connection there. So you want to make sure you just sand that off a little bit and then uh, solder them together. And you can see here I just put a daub of uh, a hot glue basically to hold this so that, you know, as I'm putting this down and this is moving around here, it's not going to jiggle this because this wire right here is super thin and probably a couple back and forth and it would snap right off. So you don't want to have that moving around at all. So I just put a daub of uh, hot glue there to hold that in there. So this is basically ready to go. So I'm just going to have these two wires going out to the <clears throat> AC2 controller for power. And it's going to get its ground through the actual track itself. And um, <clears throat> the only thing you'd have to keep in mind is if you were, if for some strange reason you had this as an insulated section, you would have to make sure that you also provide ground uh, here um, to make sure that everything got grounded. But other than that, um, that's how you modify your fast track operating track if you want to use it with the new LCS ASC2 controller. Um, so I'm going to put my track down here, wire it up, and then we'll do a demo. Okay, so here we are back at our ASC2 controller. Now remember, I have two wires coming out of my operating track section after my modification. I have the white wire, which is going to the sender magnet, and that's just for a regular uncoupling or operation or if I want to have a car operating car that has the uh, center plunger that I have to pull down something like that so that's the white wire so that is going here which is again I have this module now set to 8 IDs so that's these are IDs uh, 25 through 32 so since it's the last one here it would be ID 32 on this one and then the red wire comes from the, uh, the uh, inner rails that the sliding shoes slide on on one half of that operating track section because remember the one half is going to be ground so the two rails on the one side of the magnet are ground and the two rails on the on the other side of the magnet are power so the ones that are power comes back here that's the red wire coming back here and that's in port number it's going to be ID 31 in this case and both of these are being powered by this common coming from the ZWL and in this case I have it right now set to 12 volts so these will get 12 volts of power when I power them up at the actual track itself. So let's go up to the track and then I'll show you uh, how it works. Okay, so here we are at our track. I've got a milk car on the, uh, on the operating track here. And remember, uh, my ID number for the, the port that the red wire was going to is 31. So on my cab 2 remote, I'm just going to do accessory 31. And then basically down here, I'm just going to hit the aux 1 button temp uh, for a second, and that's going to power my milk car. 
if I kept it on, it would just keep powering it, and of course, the guy, it would only load one can, he'd be stuck sticking out of the car all the time. So I don't want to use aux 2, I want to use aux 1 in this case, because that's the momentary button. So I'm just going to hit aux 1, and we're just going to watch it. So every time I hit aux 1, he unloads a milk can, unless, of course, they're stuck in the car. And then uh, if I hit it again, start unloading cans okay but you can see uh, he's unloading them but he's not throwing them across the platform and that's because I have it set to 12 so basically because it's set to 12 volts um, there's he's unloading them nicely if I had this set to its normal which would be track power if I left it the way it was without my modifications it'd be throwing the cans halfway across the room because I'd be at 18 volts for that and it'd be too powerful basically so that's that one so again I could also if I put the uh, uncoupler over the magnet in the center now I would just have to go down to my cab 2 basically do accessory 32 because that's the ID that's associated with the magnet and again I can do just the aux 1 and I just hold it for a second and let go and then basically it just activates the magnet on the uh, operating track. So you can see that even though um, there are no instructions and you can't wire it right out of the box the way it is, you can change the wiring underneath the operating track section and you can still operate it through the AC2 module with your Cab2 remote or the iPad or whatever you know device you're using to control those modules. So. Um, it's very simple. All you're going to do is on one side of the uh, operating track section underneath, you're going to take out the uh, controller that comes with it, just unhook it. On the one side, you're going to make sure that the two rails are grounded to the outer rail, so you'll be able to see that from underneath, so you just solder a wire. And on the other side, you're going to make sure that the uh, one of these slide rails it has a wire side to it that's going to go out to your ASC2 controller to get its power when you actually push the ID and then the button aux 1 to actually power that rail. So no matter, uh, the only thing that you might, you have to keep in mind though, and this, this really goes whether you're using it through the, this modification or not, is that if you ever have some cars that don't have the two sliding rails like the milk car has two, there's basically a power and a ground on each of the trucks. But some MTH cars, like the dump cars, they just have one sliding shoe on them, and they actually ground through the wheels on the trucks themselves. And you have to make sure that um, wherever you're putting these tracks, that the side that has the sliding shoe on it is the one that gets the power. So you may have to flip the uh, track around um, 180 degrees, basically, to make sure that when it's lined up with wherever you're trying to unload to, that it has it on the correct side because originally on one of them I was testing in front of the sawmill I was testing a log dump car from MTH and I had the track reversed and so the sliding shoe was actually on the ground side and it was getting no power and it wasn't operating and I couldn't figure it out and then I realized I have the, the uh, track um, flipped around the opposite way so don't forget that one side of this operating track is going to have power and the other side of the magnet the other two rails are going to be ground so you just have to make sure um, it's oriented the correct way when you're setting up your layout and then what cars you're going to use on that particular operating track. Um, but that's pretty much it for hooking up the operating track, at least the new fast track operating track section, to the ASC2 controller and the LCS system and how you can get it to work. And again, the advantage is you can control the voltage uh, because it's now separate from track power and you can control how long the magnet's on or how long the buttons push down for your different accessories, etc. So we will be covering um, sensor tracks, we'll be covering command control switches, we'll also be covering uh, the LCS apps from both Lionel and some third party um, companies. So this is uh, only um, part two of what I think is going to be a five-part series on the LCS system so stay tuned it's taking me a while to like hook all this stuff up and and get it um, on video but um, if you're interested in the LCS setup um, stay tuned because we have a lot more coming on this 
and um, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.